Hey guys, it's Alex, and I'm here with my final monthly reading wrap-up for 2018. In December, I read nine books, which is a decent amount. I'm actually very happy about this compared with the several months prior, but also kind of bitter because I only needed ten books. Ten books read in December to get to my final 2018 reading goal, and I only got through nine, so I read officially 99 books out of 100 for 2018 which is not a big deal and I don't mind not hitting my goal. I'm just bitter that I got so unbelievably close and couldn't quite manage to get there. This is going to be kind of a low-key wrap-up because I have very little energy today. It's January 1st, I went bar hopping last night, I'm not hungover but I am very exhausted, and mostly I just kind of really need to get this video done because several of these books are library books that really need to go back in the morning. The first book that I read in December was In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This is an adult thriller about a woman who goes to a bachelorette party for one of her old friends and then someone is killed and we sort of have to unravel the mystery of who was killed and why they were killed. The main character is also unreliable which adds sort of more nuance to the story, but overall I gave this book three stars and I just found it very predictable and boring and mediocre. I didn't think it was a very well done book at all. I didn't think it was bad, and I wouldn't call it bad, but it was one of those books where I really wouldn't call it good either, and I was not too taken with Ruth Ware's writing style. I do plan on reading another one of her books, The Lion Game, but this book really didn't do much of anything for me. Then I listened to an audiobook for Speak by Laurie House Anderson. I gave this four stars, and I just really love Speak. It tells the story of a high school freshman named Melinda who was raped several weeks before she started her her freshman year in high school. And it's it's such a sad story. It's such an emotional story. And I love the relationships between the characters in this. The relationships are just so well done between her and her estranged friends, and her and her parents, and her and her art teacher, and other friends at school. And it's just one of those books that really hits me emotionally. And I did give it four stars, which wasn't really surprising, but is something that I do wonder if I'd give it five stars if I reread the physical book, because this was a reread for me. I wasn't really thrilled with the narration of this book. It wasn't that it was bad, but the narrator definitely read Melinda as much more sarcastic than I usually do, which, you know, is not a bad thing. It's just very different from how I read her. So I would, I would really like to pick up this book in another few years and see if maybe the physical copy would be a five star read for me. Then I read one of my absolute favorite books of the year, and that was Sadie by Courtney Summers. I love this book. This book is so deserving of all the hype it gets. I gave it five stars. This tells the story of a teenage girl whose younger sister was brutally murdered. She then goes on a hunt to find the man she believes is responsible for her death. And at the same time, there's a podcast who are sort of investigating the disappearance of Sadie herself. And it's a really interesting story. It The characters are so well done and the build-up to this is just amazing. Courtney Summers, above all else, knows how to build a story and it's so intense and emotional and I adored this book completely. I don't have a review out for this yet, but that will be coming sometime this month, hopefully, but it was so good. If you like young adult issue-driven contemporaries, I can't recommend this book enough. This is one of my absolute favorites. And this kind of solidified Courtney Summers as one of my favorite authors. She's just utterly amazing. And this book was wonderful. It's just, I have no words. It was just wonderful. Go read it. Then I finished Killed, Great Journalism, Too Hot to Print, edited by David Wallace. This was one of my nonfiction November reads. I did get through a portion of this back in November. It took me a while to finish because of the way the journalism is. It's many different articles, so I never wanted to read too many at a time, but I wound up giving this book four stars. It was very interesting, very worthwhile. This is one I'm glad I read, and I will definitely be keeping it on my shelf to pick up and look at some specific articles that I really loved. But as with all anthologies, some of the articles are really great, and then some are, you know, just sort of mediocre and there and forgettable, and I do think I've already forgotten some of these articles. but. If this book sounds like it's interesting to you, I think it will be. It's just a collection of newspaper articles that weren't printed for a variety of reasons. Some dramatic and some just not so dramatic. But if it sounds like you'll like it, I can't imagine you wouldn't. It was just 
a variety of articles, most of them really interesting, and I'm very glad I gave this a try. I also finally read Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo, and I gave this three stars. I don't really want to talk about this book. I don't understand the hype, and I don't mean that I don't understand why people love this, because I do. I get that there is a very hardcore fandom of people who love this book, and that's fine. I'm not saying I thought it was worthless. I gave it three stars. But what I don't understand is why it's kind of unanimous. I've never seen anyone rate this book negatively, and I don't mean like a bunch of people hating on it. I just mean I gave it three stars and I gave Six of Crows three stars, and that's the lowest rating I've ever seen anyone give it. I haven't seen anyone else rate this anything other than four or five stars, and I don't understand why. I would put this kind of in the same category as Cassandra Clare's books, and that I understand why there's a fandom, but there's also a lot of people who think they're kind of mediocre, and there's a lot of people who hate them because of the cliche tropes and all that kind of thing. That's honestly kind of what I thought of this book. It, it was very similar to Cassandra Clare's in that kind of way, but I didn't hate it. It was just like kind of forgettable. I think I liked Six of Crows better. I thought the buildup of the characters was more interesting in Six of Crows, and then she didn't really do much with those characters in Crooked Kingdom. At least that was my take on the book. I just found it kind of mediocre, and I plowed through it very quickly, and I'm glad that I'm done with it and don't have it looming over my head anymore. But I don't think I'll be picking up any more Lee Bardugo books, and I don't plan on reviewing this just because I really don't want to talk about it anymore. I did my long discussion rant on Six of Crows, and that's it for me. I don't I don't want to talk about these books anymore. And then I buddy read Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Pessel with Abby MacReads. I wound up giving this book three stars as well, but this is a very different three star read for me. I would say on pure enjoyment level because that's how I rate books. I did not enjoy this book all that much. There were a lot of things about this that I loved. I loved the ending. I loved some of the characters and their relationships. I loved sort of the build of the murder and the death and what was going on and like how sketch everything was, but there were also a lot of things I had issues with because a lot of things in this book seemed random and like there was no build up to them. They just sort of happened and you had to go with it, which I didn't enjoy very much. This is by the author of Neverworld Wake and it's honestly so disturbingly different, which is very strange. It's about a girl who finds her teacher dead of what they assume is suicide, and it sort of delves into the relationship between her and some of the popular kids at her school, and that teacher and her father, and everything sort of mixes together, and it's very weird and strange, and I really did love some aspects of this book, but there were just a lot of things that I had a problem with, and it was very thought-provoking and interesting, but overall, it still was a three-star read for me. After that, I found myself kind of burned out on YA, which is still how I'm feeling a little bit. Not that I suddenly hate the genre or anything, I'm just really not in the mood to read about teenagers. I'm very much feeling more like adult fiction and nonfiction, so that's sort of what I read for the rest of the month and what I'm reading now. I picked up In Order to Live by Young Mi Park, which is a memoir of a woman who escaped North Korea through China where she was sex trafficked and then eventually to South Korea where she lives now as a human rights activist. I thought this book was absolutely amazing. If you want to learn more about North Korea, I'd say this is a must read. This is utterly stunning. I gave it four stars, but it's one of those four stars where I seriously considered giving it five stars. Like I still kind of am like wondering if I cheated it out of a five star rating because it was so good, but I did have like some very minor issues with it that just like barely kept it from being an absolute favorite for me. But this is one I highly recommend. It's very short, it's very easy to read and easy to follow, and it's very, very informative. And I think if you do want to learn more about what it's like to live in North Korea and what it's like for people who escape, this is one that you really should pick up. And it's so emotional and hard to read and just worth it in every sense of the word. For Christmas, my sister gave me an indie book by a local author, so I, I read that next because I was just kind of curious what it was about and it was fairly quick, so so I decided to pick up The Southside Strangler by Richard Foster. This is a true crime book about a serial killer who was active in Richmond, Virginia, which is where I live in the 1980s. It, this is kind of a procedural true crime, I guess. 
I don't really know how to describe it. It's very fact-based. It pretty much gives you a play-by-play -play of what happened, what the crimes were, the investigation, how everything proceeded, and it's very interesting. I gave it four stars. It's not usually the kind of thing I'd pick up for myself just because I like more narrative-based nonfiction and creative nonfiction, and this really is just like telling you what happened. But I did learn a lot from this, and it was very interesting because it is from it is about where I'm from, and it, that added so much to me. If you like sort of that procedural true crime, I'd highly recommend this because it was so well researched. Just I think for me, if it hadn't been set in Richmond, I don't think I'd have been quite as interested as I was. Overall, very much worth it, and I'm glad my sister gave it to me, and I'm glad I got a chance to read it. And also I'm very happy because I don't get to read many indie books just because I don't have access to them because most of the books I buy are used and there aren't really a lot of indie books in the mix so it was cool to get to read one. And the final book that I picked up in December was The Deep End of the Ocean by Jacqueline Midgard. This is an adult drama about a family whose young son has been kidnapped. It's told half from the perspective of the boy's mother and then half from the perspective of the boy's older brother Vincent. And it's a very interesting premise. This is very much a drama novel and not like a thriller or a mystery. Like that it has some of those aspects just because the three-year-old has been kidnapped. But overall it's a family drama and it tells the story of sort of their reactions and how it changed their lives. Which I love, but I gave this book three stars because I didn't think it was very well done. I found the writing kind of trying too hard and just like very clumsy and clunky, and the main characters were all boring and unlikable, which was just sort of made for kind of a rough read. It wasn't terrible, you know, it was three stars, it was kind of boring and forgettable, and honestly, this is the last I'll talk about this book, and potentially the last I'll ever think of it. I do think if you like sort of Jodi Pico books, this was sort of similar, a lot of the issues I had with it were similar to what I feel about Jodi Pico books only this was less entertaining. With Jodi Pico books I do find myself much more invested than I was in this book, but if you like her books this might be worth giving it a try. Just not the kind of book for me, which is very disappointing because it sounded right up my alley. I managed to get through this fairly quickly, I think, I hope. I'm very tired and all I want to do right now is go curl up in my bed and just wait for death because I am exhausted. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. I don't believe I have any reviews for any of these up yet, but I'm hoping to as January progresses. I have filmed most of the reviews for these already, so if you're interested in more in-depth thoughts then stick around and hopefully in the next few weeks I will have full reviews on most of these posted. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.